Take me out to see the Railcats. All aboard for the Railcats. Everybody shout for the Railcats. We're going to play ball. George Schlemsey alongside head groundskeeper Noah Simmons. I wanted to go behind the scenes with you today, Noah, on what exactly goes into the everyday tasks of taking care of U.S. Steelyard. I know you're here early. Tell me about the start of your day and how many hours you put in in a 24-hour time period. Yeah, no, we get here about 8 o'clock every day. Um, me and uh, the other my guys on the field all day long. Um, we start at 8 o'clock. Um, normally at 8 o'clock right when I get here, the first thing I do is walk around the field. Look for dry areas on the field, make sure all of our sprinkler heads went right. You know, we'll get all of our stuff together, talk and make a daily plan of what's going to happen today, what time batting practice starts. And then around 8.30, 45, we start mowing the grass, you know, the first things that we do every day. Um, and then we start working the infield with dirt and the warning checks and just keep moving along throughout the day until batting practice starts. I want to talk about cutting the grass. Do you cut it at the same length every day? Do you cut it at the same angle every day? I know cutting your lawn at your house, maybe one day you'll go vertical, one day you'll go horizontal, one day you'll go diagonal. How does it work here at the steel yard? Normally I try to change it up every home stand, so when a new team comes to town, I try to change up the pattern, you know, kind of just when, when I bring the mower down on the field, I look and talk with my guys and say, hey, what do you guys want to do? What kind of pattern do you want to put in? We'll keep it in for about a week, and then at the end of the week, we'll mow it out and put a new pattern in. How about the moisture of the grass? I you know it's a part of the area any place. You said you start watering around how often do you have to then go over it before the seven You're talking about the infield dirt or the grass? Well, well, the infield dirt, we start watering uh, right away. As soon as we're done mowing, we'll get the infield dirt conditioned and get a good moisture level in there and water throughout the day. The grass, we water, I start watering about one in the morning every day. Um, water for about a half hour of a zone, just depending on the weather and how everything, you know, if we got rain in the forecast or anything like that. Now, how about in terms of the moisture? Can, do you have a sense for just by feeling if it's too light, if it's too dry, if it needs to maybe sit in the sun for another hour, if you need to go over again, how do you know exactly what you want in terms of moisture? Yeah, we'll walk out to the infield and kind of show you. Um, when we get out here today, this is kind of how it looks like in the morning. It's pretty dry, we'll a tag on it, you know, a nail tag on it, um, and then we'll start water. It's a little bit of moisture in the spring, so I'll cut it open with my foot, and I kind of just get a feel for the infield and how my infield uh, mix works and how it what it needs, does it need more water, does it need enough? Um, and we'll show you later when we start watering the infield and how, how you can tell when there's enough moisture in the infield and when it needs more. And there's position players that want more water in their position and some that don't want as much. So let's, I was just going to ask you about that. So let's say you've got Ryan Fitzgerald, who's not going to make sure that yep. he tells you, I really like it as dry as possible. Do you try to accommodate for him Absolutely. and everybody else? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, most of the players on our infield this year are liking it a lot wetter than what I've done in the past years. Um, but yes, you know, whatever they whatever they prefer is normally what we do. I mean, weather plays a part in everything. You know, if I have a huge thunderstorm coming in, Miss Gerald's telling me, "Hey, I want the rain feel a little wetter." You know, you gotta you gotta play with that a little bit. You gotta know what moisture is coming in and how much your infield can take. You know what? I know one part of keeping an infield dirt that is essential is constantly dragging it and being able to do it properly. I know these two guys are the best in the business at doing it. I want to take it through what it's like to actually drag. You think, you think yeah. you guys are up for the challenge? Let's do it. All right, let's definitely do it. Now, first thing you want to do is what? Take me through it, guys. Obviously, you pick it up, and you start from what? Foul line? Foul so line. when we come out on a game day, there'll be foul line here. So we'll come out of the dugout. We'll come on the other side of the foul line, put our drags down, and then just start dragging this way. We make sure our boards are down, which gives us the level drag. And we just walk nice and how often do you do it four to seven times? Uh, on average, you probably drag three to four times a day. Um, it's good, it's nice and flat food. Does this change at all in terms of how often you drag the rain? Whether it was a four day night, a four night four times a day, or a ten rain for four days at all or not? Uh, we try to stay off of it so we don't cause any ruts and the, the infield gets under it. But if it's pretty dry, we like to drag it a lot and get a lot of moisture into the infield. Derek, I know this is your first year. How long did it take you to be comfortable with dragging? Uh, it took probably about a week before I felt like I knew what I was doing, but I'm still, still learning as we go, for sure. 
One of the most essential parts of an entire baseball diamond is how you water the dirt and the grass. And today we're lucky enough to have Noah, Derek, and Cody allow us to go in with them and actually get to water the grass. I know you said that I'm going to have the opportunity to actually hold the hose. I know there's an art to this. This isn't as easy as people think, is it? There's some people that can't do it, but yeah, no, you'll be good. All right, let's definitely do it. Uh, where am I going to stand? You, stand you go second. I'm going to go second. Okay. Put it over your shoulders. Taking my spot. Put it over your shoulders. Okay. There you go, just like that. Now, when, you're, when you get on the infield surface, you got to do everything, try not to drag your feet. Try to just walk flat footed as possible. Gotcha. All right. Now, do you always start on the first base side? Yeah, normally I start right over here at third base. This is our morning water. It's our heaviest water of the day. We try to get uh, the moisture all the way down into the We'll probably water two or three more times uh, before the uh, first pitch tonight, uh, but this is our one with the most moisture. Now it did not rain last night. Does that change anything at all for how much we want to water the dirt? Not normally because if it does, it is going to rain the night before, the tarp's on, so when we pull the tarp off, the moisture is still not in the infield clay. Uh, but if it's going to rain throughout the day, we normally won't water this heavy throughout the day. Third base, obviously, we call it the hot corner for a reason. Do you water the dirt here at third any differently than the hole at shortstop on the right side of the infield? Um, third base is normally pretty wet because it's, um, normally there's not people rounding on third base. You know, it's more of a sliding where you're sliding. Uh, there's two areas on a baseball field where you have to go. Moisture helps keep the ball down in the player's mitts easier. So, what kind of angle do you want to take at the dirt? I notice you're not going directly at it. It's almost as if it's parallel um, with the dirt. This time in the morning, I try to hit it like harder, straight down on the ground, where you kind of almost see it puddling up a little bit, just to kind of really push the moisture down into the soil. Um, but during the game, we try to keep it up in the air a little bit like this, so that way we're not moving the material around. But again, we'll drag three or four more times today after this one. Getting a chance to watch Noah and the staff water the dirt. Guys, you've done this before. How long did it take you to get accustomed in terms of making sure you're not dragging your feet and having the appropriate distance from the first and second? It's, it's challenging. Uh, Noah, is, Noah, as you can tell, he likes to go from back to the infield, middle of the infield, to the front of the infield. We really just like to stay behind him, make sure he has a full pass to water the whole field, and just stay out of his way to make sure we're not dirt. How long would you say it takes? This first one's the longest. I'd say this one would take half hour, 40 minutes. It just depends on how the soil feels. Well, uh, we kind of know how the feeling after a while, you kind of learn your infield skin and what moisture it should be at. So it just depends on when we get it to the right moisture. Now, if you were to go over it with too much water, do you end up having to put more dirt on it, or do you usually just give it more time to dry that? It just depends on the timing of the day, you know? I mean, if right before the game it feels too wet to me, yeah, we'll grab a couple bags, throw it out there to try to dry it up a little bit. Absolutely. Getting a full tutorial of how to water the infield dirt, Noah Simmons taking us through it. How am I doing so far? You're not doing bad. I haven't seen your feet slide or anything yet. You're giving me enough hose. So, Derek, Derek doesn't have a dragon all over the infield back there. So I think we're doing good so far. Now we're on the second base side. This is where John Holland and Annie DeHaze used to play. Do they ever request you how they want this wet? Yeah, uh, John Holland especially. He likes, he likes it very wet before the game. Though. Like I said, this year has been very weird with players asking for how wet they want it to be. And they, they want it soft. So yeah, John Holland and uh, shortstop uh, Vince Gerald both they really like they really like the soft infield. You said this is the first time you've had those guys really want it that wet. Any reason why as an infielder you would want it more wet or less wet? It just really helps keep the ball down, you know. So when it comes off the grass and just meets the dirt surface, it's not taking a huge bounce once it hits the dirt. It's staying down just like it does when it's on the grass, soft and it just rolls right across it. What about the lift where the grass and the dirt meet? Yeah. Do you have to approach that differently? Every night we take back that blowers to blow out the material and they can push into the, into the grass so there's no lift. 
Um, and then, so that way it's just, and we edge it out with sidewalk edges for the team leads on the road. We just try to keep our edges from our dirt very deep. That way, no bad hops, no players take the edges to upper body or anything like that. How long would you say it takes to go over the cut of the grass for the dirt leads? Uh, it just depends. Um, blowing it out takes anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. We take a backpack tour real quick. But when we take a sidewalk edger, it could take us three, four hours to edge everything out, clean up the grass, all that kind of stuff. I did not expect it to be that long, but you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, absolutely. How many people do you like to keep on the hall? Is it between you and the other? No, no, two or three people. Um, you know. It's always nice to have more when you have more time and people, but normally there's other people doing other tasks. As you can see Eddie out there doing the warning set. We try to even out our time equally so that way everything's getting done in a fair manner of time. Now how about here? This is where the majority of guys will take their leads and then their secondary leads. So in the morning right here at first base, you see normally I try to get it pretty wet in here, but then throughout the day I try to keep it pretty dry. For example, that moisture is going to go down into the, the mix, that way their feet during the game and then bite into it. But you also don't want a player that's going to be rounding first base to come through here during the game and slip because it's too wet. A very uh, essential area for players because you don't want them slipping when they're rounding first to make their way to second. Now where they're sliding into second base, it can be a little softer because they're sliding on the ground. You don't want them to hurt their, you know, their size when they're sliding. The busiest part of the dirt is the backstop, the pit area. The guys from the on-deck circle, no matter what, are going to have to come into the batter's box. I noticed we've got our mats on. Why do we have that right now covering home plate? Every single night, Cody and Derek, they come out and attach home plate and the mound. And we keep mats on so we get a 100% black clay underneath here. And we want it to stay moist, we want it to stay wet. Um, if it stays dry, the clay falls apart, it turns into dust, and there's holes in your batter's boxes. Those kind of things. So we keep these mats on to keep the moisture underneath the soil. So it goes on approximately 30 minutes after the game or right away? Yeah, probably about 30 minutes. Maybe this is one of the first things that they patch. So as soon as uh, it's patched, we try to keep as much moisture in all the time as we can. So we put it on as soon as we're done patching. This stays on until game time. And the only time it's really off is from first inning to the ninth inning. That's about it. Obviously, you've got home plate on the bar, you've got the catcher and the hitter in this box. How do you approach the dirt of this surface? Any different towards maybe the outfield where the grass meets the dirt, or maybe the infield where the grass meets the dirt? Well, of course, the batter's boxes and the catcher's box is one of the most important parts, and you know that mat helps a lot with keeping the moisture in. But one of the most important parts of home plate is the pit area in here. Um, the balls come in, they bounce in here, um, and if you want them to stay down. You don't want them to hit hard in here and bounce over the catcher or hit the umpire or anything like that. So this is one of the most essential parts of the baseball field, the pit area right here. And we'll show you um, how we make this area where the catchers like it. We have a chance to get a full tutorial from Noah Cody. Derek again. This is... Uh, my, number two? Number yeah, number two again. Two again. This is the wettest part of the infield right here in the morning. We will flood this area because when a pitcher throws a ball and it gets short, you don't want it to bounce and go far up to the backstop. You want it to stay down low. So we'll flood this area right in the pit area. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes keeping that mat wet, it keeps a little bit more moisture down underneath for the playing surface or underneath the batting box. Now how about the front of the play? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this, will, this will be the wettest spot right here where the pitcher can throw the ball down and where it would bounce. Now where the catcher and the umpire and them stand, um, the catcher you just want it to be moist enough to where his cleats bite into the clay, but not where it's too soft where he's slipping and stuff. So this will, you'll see this is what our uh, pet area will look like in the morning time. It, I mean, it really it looks like a, a pond. You know, we really try to keep the moisture down here so when the ball bounces, it, it's just not it's not flying. It has to be the softest part of the infield skin. How often would you talk with Alfredo and James on the box or maybe the visiting catchers in terms of how they like it and what they've noticed? One time, I talked to them one time this year and they just they told me that they like it really soft uh, and they, have, they haven't had any complaints about the pit area. So it's been good. So. so where would you rank this? Is this maybe the most essential part of the entire world? Absolutely. I think uh, home plate and the pitching mound are the most important. The infield can have up to 10 people on it at once. The base is loaded, 
all the infield, you know, all the infield players, the batter, you know, umpire, everybody, you know. So there's always the most people on home plate, you know. So I mean, I think this is a very important part of the infield, but the dirt's very important for all players of what they like and how they feel, because it's our job to make sure the players have what they want to win baseball. Games. Brown screw here from U.S. Steel Yard. We've got Cody, we've got Derek, and we've got Eddie. And today we have the privilege of going over patching. Guys, I know it's important for every, every pitcher to get in the bullpen and warm up before the game. I know this is a much more complex process. Let's get through it today. What is the first part of patching that we need to know about? Uh, first, we just pretty much assess the mound and see what the damage is from the game and how the pitchers did what they did to the mound. So the first thing we do is we see what we need, and then we take off the turface that's covering, which is the top layer, and we take it off because it can't be in there, and then we put some water in here when he gets all the turface off. And what the water does, it activates the clay again, so that when we put new clay on top, it'll even it out, so it'll stay together. Right. so you don't even need to water to sit that long. You can no, no, down really and light like, layer and then this dry clay go over the top and then we just come down here, we spread it out, make sure it's nice and flat platform. There's a lot here so we'll use just some down here. And you just pretty much just use your hands and just make sure that there's a flat platform for the pitcher so he can get his foot right up against the rubber and everything else is good. So this is in regards to the start of a pitcher when they throw? Yes. Okay, not in regards to the finish. That would obviously be the more down The finish is here. down there. This is where their back foot is when they push off the rubber. So now that we have a flat platform, everything looks good. We put some more water on the top just so it'll bite together. And then Eddie will come by and he'll tamp it for us. Look at how long you are, Eddie. Wow, get after it, man. And now, how long do you uh, patching on average to patch both bullpens, the mound and the plate, um, usually takes us about an hour, hour and 15 minutes every day. Um, it's an everyday thing. It's one of the things we have to do every day in order to get the game going. Eddie, you've gotten pretty comfortable with that, haven't you? Yeah. Yes, he has indeed. So Eddie's finishing up here, making sure everything's all compact, and then we're going to put warm water on it. So you put a lot of water on this part, and this part's called binding. So we put a lot of water on, and then we come across with our feet, and we kind of bind the material together. And what this does is when pitchers, they have their cleats on, so their cleats don't come in and chip out the black dirt, and then that's what gets all over the mound. So this is why we do the binding, so pitchers can't get their foot in there and just chip out at the mound. Over bullpen patching here from the steel yard, Jared Schlinski alongside Cody, Derek, and Eddie. Gentlemen, what is the next process? Obviously, we have gotten to the rubber. What do we do in terms of the finish now? Do we so, need to resurface? What exactly do we need to do? So, now that we're done with this, we will start going down to the landing spot of where the pitchers are. And it will pretty much just do the same thing. We'll take back the uh, surface again and just see what the damage is down here and what we can do to fix it. Um, most of the times, this is not the worst part. Most of the times, up there is always gonna be more holy than down here. So what we do is we just do that. We can see that there's little holes right here and stuff. So we'll put some water down. And it's pretty much, it's the same process as we did up there, just making it at an angle instead of flat up top like the top. How much clay would you say you go through per game? Um, it's about a bag, bag and a bag every other day. Um, it's just, it's, like I said, it just depends on how the pitchers like it. Some pitchers will come up there and dig up there for 10, 15 minutes and there's a crater. And then other times when Charlie pitches, there's nothing, you know? Gotta love when Charlie's on the mound, right? Yes, sir. You don't have to worry about too many guys coming up in the bullpen either. No, Charlie is the man. How long did it take you guys to get comfortable with the tamper in terms of laying the clay onto the surface? Well, I would say probably a couple weeks. We're going to let uh, Jerry patch this time. I'm going to get the patch? Wow. You're going to get to tamp it. So all you're going to do is just pound it as hard as you can. All right, Eddie, I got good shoes to fill, man. There you go. 
Excellent. Now, do I want to get the same spot over and over? Do I want to? You want to just make sure spot? it's all flat. So you're all gonna flat. actually hit it until it looks like it's all one piece. Wow. In my workout into the day. That's good right there. Eric, you want to get after it? Show me what I did wrong. Yeah, finish those edges a little touch bit. Up the, edges. the edges, okay. And we do the same thing. We add more water and we bind it together just so when they land, it's not going to take off the whole shelf. And that's strictly just under one, correct? Yes. Just binding it together, making it a flat, smooth surface. Will you talk to relievers and ask what they want in terms of how much water you add, how much clay you add? Um, here, they like a lot of water on the bullpen. So we like to water in the morning and okay. put this a nice layer over it and then we'll put the tarp over it just to keep the moisture in there so it stays decently wet. So now do you have to do this again before game time? Or no, no, it? no. It's, Whenever they get on the mound, um, I know teams will throw bullpens when they're doing their uh, BP and stuff, but we do not touch this until after the game. Until after the game, okay. So about an hour before, or I'm sorry, in about an hour process, and then after the game, you get to brief the service. Yep, season. that's everything. Guys, thanks so much for the time. We've got Derek, we've got Eddie, and we've got Cody. This is the Grounds Crew video. We're gonna play ball today. Take me out to see the Railcats. All aboard for the Railcats.